What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Punk Rock Player One channel. And today I got you guys a review for a band called Archetypes Collide. This is a new band for me. I just discovered them. I've uh, been kind of looking at the latest releases and this popped up. And I'm glad it did. Uh, it's pretty good. So um, let's go over the track reviews. So basically starting with Parasite. Um... It had some weedily weedily riffs at the beginning, which was pretty cool. I, I kind of learned that term from uh, the punk rock NBA, um, Finn McKenty. Uh, I can definitely see why it's called weedily weedily, but it has a lot of those in this song. Uh, the vocals, to me, in my opinion, for being a first listen for this band, it sounds a little bit like a mix between like, I don't know, like if Fat Mike from No Effects was screaming and uh, a little bit of Chad Kroger in the singing part. And later, like, when there's clean vocals introduced, it kind of sounds a little bit like, uh, and this is kind of a general description because a ton of people sound like Chester Bennington when doing clean vocals, but it kind of sounded like, Ch Ch reminded me of Chester Bennington from Linkin Park with the clean vocals in a couple of these songs. But Parasite in particular is mostly uh, like a heavy song, like a heavy hardcore-ish riff riffage song, and um, it doesn't. This song really doesn't stick out to me that much, but it is very good. Um, it's not one of my top five, but I would definitely listen to this again. Parasite's very good, um, and it also had kind of like a cool techno voice interlude towards the end into the breakdown i appreciate that a little bit of different sauce thrown in there it's cool uh the next song after that was fade away and fade away i was kind of surprised it's not more popular at least on um apple music um fade away is very good i like uh it kind of had some hyper pop sounds at the beginning and then pop vocals and then you hear the nickelback vocals that i was talking about uh that's the best thing that i compare this to the what it reminds me of anyway uh, he very much has that yarl kind of like uh chad Grover. and uh you know butt rock dudes of late and uh yeah um uh, yeah i gave this one a this one's definitely a banger. Banger alert for Fade Away. Uh, and what I noticed with this band in particular, the because everybody does the good cop, bad cop, you know, transitions these days with with metal and um, gent metal and all of that stuff. You know, going from hardcore screaming to Linkin Park chorus. But these guys, I feel like they seamlessly do it. Like. I haven't listened to all of the bands of today because I, I know that's like a huge thing now to kind of try to sound like Linkin Park or Bring Me the Horizon. So I'm not fully of knowledge in this arena, but uh, so take my words with a grain of salt. But uh, in my opinion, uh, these guys do uh, the transition from good cop, bad cop very seamlessly like it it fits well in the song it doesn't feel like uh, a jigsaw puzzle just mushed together like some songs sound these days um you know with your typical Linkin Park chorus it, it, it these are pretty well constructed songs so props to them for that I also have here that this is where the clean vocals come out very much uh kind of reminds me just this is a compliment to the singer but the kind of vocal melodies and tones that he uses it very much with a clean vocal sounds like chester bennington um which is cool uh, i'm always down for that and uh yeah so this band i, I don't really know much about this band but it, they might have multiple vocalists or maybe this guy when he sings just sounds like multiple different people which that would be interesting but I'm guessing there's a clean vocals guy and the Nickelback guy that does screaming too pretty interesting um, pretty interesting mix uh, you know like you wouldn't expect 
I guess you could expect these days like like a butt rock vocals into screaming, but it's pretty good. Um, the next song, Counterfeit, has like a cool Nine Inch Nails uh, beginning. I, I liked how that sounded. And then it went into the, the Nickelback vocal-ish chorus. And a lot of the times on this one, the clean vocals, they used uh, production to kind of make it, to me, sound kind of like... Uh, like how anime does uh, with the falsettos and uh, with anime intros or anime TV series intros, you know, th that kind of thing. Um, and it sounded good. It's good production on this album, you could tell. Um, and I think this is their, this guy's, these guys' uh, debut album. So to get uh, that kind of production on the debut album, that's pretty impressive. And I think these guys are from Arizona, I think. So I want a little bit about this album. So this album actually came out a year ago in March 2023. But it came up on my radar because this deluxe version came out uh, this March, this year. So that's why I'm reviewing it. And uh, I was like, yeah, sure. What the heck? Um, and uh, yeah, not disappointed so far. Uh, the next song is What If I Fall. And I went ahead and put this one and Fade Away in my top five. What If I Fall, it has probably the best vocals in the album. And this is the song that has kind of uh, Chester Bennington-like vocals and then trades to Nickelback-like vocals uh, during the chorus. And uh, I noticed that so far, like... A thing that I've kind of learned to listen to is uh, the mix, kind of. I'm no expert with mixing at all, but I could tell for sure that the vocals are a lot more distinguished and easy to hear uh, than some albums I listen to, and I appreciate that. It sounded pretty good. Um, and it wasn't blowing out anything. It wasn't like... Uh, you know, hiding anything else like the instruments. It, it seemed well mixed, but you could tell the vocals were higher up. And I thought that was pretty cool um, that they did that. Uh, the next song is My Own Device. And I went ahead and put this also in my top five because <clears throat> it has a really cool, like, 80s synth intro. And it almost sounds like it, this is like an 80s tribute song which I, I kind of liked. Like, for example, during the verses, when the drums start, doo -doo -ch, doo -doo -doo -ch, kind of like that, it kind of reminded me of, like, Motley Crue or, like, any kind of hair metal, uh, arena metal kind of drums. And the synths throughout all this entire song definitely made this particular song stand out to me. Uh, and that's why I put this uh, in my top five for this for this album. Um, yeah, I would say, <clears throat> and later in the album too, they use synths and keyboards and different effects, more hyper pop kind of stuff later too. And I really think that helps this music stand out, uh, this particular album, and these guys if they keep doing that. I think that'll help them stand out because. A lot of times, uh, when you have this kind of genre, this kind of like gent metal slash hardcore slash post hardcore kind of thing, it can get muddied up with all the songs sounding the same. Um, and honestly, I kind of like that about the genre, which is probably not good. But because um, <clears throat> I like pop punk, and a lot of pop punk songs, if you ground them down to their core, sound very samey but that's why i kind of like pop punk that's kind of what i get for liking it um it also makes me like the post hardcore stuff that they're doing like with all of the good cop bad cop vocals uh on the post hardcore side of genre these days but um i do like how this band seems like it's trying to differentiate itself from the pack uh with the different like choices of adding extra synths or extra instruments and um yeah so that really made that particular song stand out to me 
The next song is Suffocate Me. This is more of your typical um, faster post-hardcore song. Uh, and it's pretty good. Um, I even noticed, to me, in my opinion, uh, his vocals kind of had like a slipknot kind of uh, n- like pattern um, in the verses, which I thought was cool because I, I do like Slipknot. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this this song was pretty good, and it has another nice uh, kind of Nickelback chorus, uh, which I thought was cool. Um, yeah, and after Suffocate Me was Destiny, and this song uh, definitely not my favorite of the album, but. I understand its merits. It's got very good singing vocals, nice falsetto voice, actually, and uh, toward the end of the vocal when he's singing. Um, but in my opinion, it's kind of uh, I've kind of heard songs like this before. It kind of sounds like like an ESPN background song. So uh, Destiny definitely not my kind of jam. But I understand if uh, people like that. Uh, it's just not my thing. Um, yeah, probably my least favorite song on the album. But uh, after Destiny, uh, everything else picks up right where Suffocate Me left off, in my opinion. So that's good. Uh, the next song uh, is Deep End. This immediately picks back up for me in my interest of the album. It's a cool intro and riffs. And it uh, kind of goes back to how Parasite was your typical post-hardcore like heavy-hitting song. And so is Deep End. And it kind of returns to that. And I do like the song. It's very good. Um, The next song is Separate. Separate, uh, when I was listening to it, I finally figured out, like, what this guy's vocals sound like the most. Because you can't just say the typical answer, like Nickelback or Chester Bennington or Fat Mike. You know, you got to pick something more specific. So to me, this song really showed that he sounds a lot like the Beartooth vocalist. Uh, I think his name is Caleb Shomo. But, yeah, this definitely sounds like a Beartooth song, Uh, especially from the most recent album um, from Beartooth. And, uh, yeah, it has a very good chorus. It's kind of typical with this album so far. It has cool synths as well in the song and yeah all the instrumentals in the song i would say is the best so far Uh, i really like i really did like how separate sounds it also had a cool breakdown it kind of had everything uh the next song is paranoid and paralyzed i'm surprised actually separate didn't make my top five but it didn't but um we'll go over that later so paranoid and paralyzed is the first time I think that we hear acoustic guitar in this album and this is uh, number 10 so that's kind of interesting Um, and it also had a lot of cool electronic drums trap drums kind of thing Uh, pop mix yeah mostly pop metal and it also had good lyrical play and this this song kind of shows off their genre bending and uh, yeah um, that's what made this song stick out to me. Uh, it kind of flexed their genre bending. And the next song, Silence, uh, kind of goes on the heavier side. Uh, and the feature was very good. I think the feature mostly did clean vocals and then maybe did some vocals during the breakdown, I think. Uh, yeah, they, they stuck the landing with this. It's pretty good. It's, again, it's uh, pop-tinged metal has good clean vocals and it also for some reason the drumming sticked out to me in this track I I liked it and the next song Love Again is another more pop kind of and tasty like tasty instrumentals in my opinion like clean guitar lead a lot of times and distorted rhythm guitar during the verses and then again they had more synths so these guys have some good synths going on they should keep doing that in future releases. Whatever whatever that instrument is, I'm, I'm not an expert, but like, I think it's a mixture of synths and keyboards. 
they should keep that going. It sounds very good. Uh, yeah, and in my opinion, this song kind of fit the structure or the sound of like a emo song or a the most like punk slash emo sound. So that will automatically get higher uh, support for me, obviously. So uh, Love Again is in my top five. And then the next two songs, I think, might be the deluxe songs. Might have included Love Again, but I think it's mostly Ghost and They Don't Know. Uh, Ghost is has a very good catchy chorus, more of a slower song. And then towards the end, they, they still have a breakdown, and it still has some edge to it. So still kept me interested. Uh, very good song. Uh, the next song, the uh, last one, actually, They Don't Know. Um, has hyper pop sounds at the beginning. <laughs> this is the best way I could describe it. It's like that's the best way I could describe it. But um, yeah, uh, and then it mixed with rock, in and out, hyper pop sounds, rock sound, you know, guitar, yeah. Um, and also had interesting like staccato, like uh, guitar during the verses, and also interesting like vocal patterns during the verses so and it had a cool chorus so these guys are really the chorus kings they are very good at the chorus and okay so let's go through which are my top five so fade away is in my top five what if i fall is in the top five this is in no particular order my own device is number three and love again and I didn't choose the fifth one I think the fifth one is going to be separate so those are my top five tracks this is a very good album go listen to it these guys are new relatively new and I my final score is oh and spoiler alert i'm switching my uh grading scale because you can get kind of more in-depth scores with a one to ten scale so with that in mind i give this album this deluxe album a eight out of ten yeah uh very good i feel very good about that i mean eight out of ten for your debut album that's pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, go check these guys out, and I will see you guys later.